We've nearly done it. Our last video, question 12. So this is about how Stalin changed Russia socially slash culturally. Um, once again, I think those two words may be used a bit interchangeably. So background information. Everyone had to praise Stalin all the time. Newspapers credited him with every success. Poets thanked him for bringing the harvest. People leapt to their feet to applaud every time his name was mentioned. Many of the social changes to Russia were related to the creation of what was known as the Court of Stalin, including propaganda, the control of education, youth groups and religion, all created this image that Stalin was God. Stalin also changed Russia um, via the treatment of minorities and women. So let's look at how. So how did he change Russia for women initially? So he improved higher education opportunities for women, allowing 20% of all university places to be directed to women. This meant there were more women in high-skilled jobs like scientists. And to aid that, creches were opened, something that hadn't been um, in place in Lenin's time. So all of these are positives that are moving towards equality that go beyond what Lenin did. However, women weren't equal to men. And some of the things that Lenin did, Stalin removed. So the female division or department of the Communist Party, the Zenotodel, Z-H-E-N-O-T-D-E-L, was removed. Um, the increased ability and rights to have abortions was also removed. Divorce was made harder to get. So these were things that Lenin introduced um, that Stalin took back. Indeed, a useful statistic might be that only 13% of the Communist Party was made up of women under Stalin. With Lenin, it was 12%, so there was hardly any difference politically for women. So let's look at other positives, positive social changes that are beyond women. So education improved, discipline was reinstated into schools, and 90% of the population could read um, and write by the 1940s, early 1940s. There was also increased um, hospital care as well as education and there was no unemployment. So let's look at some of the negatives. So the persecution of minorities. Things got a lot worse um, in comparison to Russification. The Holodomor marked the extermination by starvation of 3 million Ukrainians between 1932 and 1933. Um, there was mass deportations of certain groups. For example, 172,000 Koreans were deported because it was believed that they were colluding with the Japanese in World War II completely falsely in the vast, vast majority of cases. And then culturally, the biggest change of all was the, was the court of Stalin, where people were almost brainwashed into believing that Stalin was God. Now, how did this happen? Well, the 1936 constitution that said that Russia was a free society, the most democratic country in the world, was merely a propaganda device. There wasn't freedom of speech, like the Constitution said. There wasn't freedom of religion. There wasn't freedom from arbitrary arrest. There wasn't free voting and free elections. Indeed, the only people you could elect every four years was the one communist candidate. Um, it was all a prop. It wasn't worth the paper it was written on. Indeed, the NKVD carried out the Great Terror and this great terror instilled a climate of fear that was completely the opposite of freedom. 
So propaganda marked Stalin's regime and through this he spread the messages that he wanted people to repeat. So he spread the idea that Russia was a place of happiness and that the people were content and successful and that Stalin was worshipped by everyone. And in spreading this message, eventually the message became true when combined with the climate of fear. So the propaganda tools were things like doctored photos, um, youth organisations, so there was the Octoberists for the youngest children, then the Young Pioneers, where kids were indoctrinated. Um, you had censorship of any written materials which were pre-read to make sure they complied with Stalin's message about Russia. And the famous communist propaganda tool of the Pravda was still widely used. Now, Pravda means actually, when it's translated, truth. And people used to secretly say that there was ironically no truth in the Pravda. The other thing that Stalin did was ban religion. So he closed religious buildings, he made churches into museums, he made priests leave their villages, he banned um, mosques, and this was because he wanted to make himself into the god of the people, and he thought people should be worshipping him, not other religious gods. Indeed, a society called the Society of the Godless was put in charge of destroying religion and making sure that there was nobody competing for attention. Stalin wanted to be God. And through the use of fear, censorship and propaganda, Stalin did create a complete court around him. Um, where he was worshipped like a god by the vast majority of people. So here is the summary of how Stalin changed Russia socially. This is what it looks like as a revision card. And if you want to read more about it, um, there are different pages in the revision guide on this. Page 37, 38, 39, 50 and 51 all cover the content in this video. So, we've done. That's the 12 most likely questions that could come up in the Russia exam. There are other smaller questions, but if you cover these 12, you should feel confident. Remember to re-look really at your dual coding diagram and make sure you're looking at it regularly and seeing if you can verbalise the argument without looking at all your notes. And well done, because that is our last video.